Hello? Yes, I would love to purchase one ticket to the Super Bowl in Arizona. Because the Minnesota Vikings are going to the Super Bowl. That was an amazing week one victory versus the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, I'm overreacting right now. Obviously, I'm letting that purple Kool-Aid hit my veins right now. But if you think the Vikings actually have a chance to get to the Super Bowl this season and you're just feeling it, after that week one victory versus the Packers, go down, hit that sub button. I would love to see if we could get 100, 150 subs just off this video. I know you're watching, and I know you're not sub. And if you think the Vikings have a chance to make it to the Super Bowl, hit that sub button. Welcome to the Vikings Now. I'm your host, Patrick Seatman. I'm going to give you guys my notes, takeaways, and reaction from that amazing week one game, and it honestly could not have gone any better. The Vikings beating the Green Bay Packers 23-7. to It was a great game, very up and down. Vikings came out strong in the first two quarters. The offense looked electric. And then also, if you're looking at Aaron Rodgers, he honestly didn't dominate as much as I thought he would. You know, that was always my number one thing with this Packers defense combined with Aaron Rodgers. I was always scared that if you told Aaron Rodgers, hey, We'll hold this team under 20 points. You go get us to 21. Didn't happen today on either side. Kirk Cousins had a great game, 23 of 32, 277 yards, two tutties. We'll get him into him more later. But at first, I want to know your one-word reaction. You only get one word. Just one word. What would your one-word reaction be to this game? Mine, I'm going to go cop out. Skull. You know what? U.S. Bank Stadium was absolutely electric today. The skull chant at the end of the first half, literally I got chills, and I'm here in Dallas, Texas. It was fantastic. So give me your one-word reaction. I'm going skull because I think, hey, purple is here, and it's going to be a purple rain in Philly next Monday night. Now let's get into some of my notes. Let's kind of break this game down a little bit. Kirk Cousins, he is the man. He looked great today. You know, Kevin O'Connell coming in here, especially with what we went through last season, with this Mike Zimmer just negativity he brought on the Kirk Cousins and never fully believing in him, he came out and he was great against Green Bay. 23 or 32, 277 yards and two touchdowns. I love the way Kirk played today. He actually showed me he had a little bit of wiggle moving in and outside of the pocket. I thought he had very clean pockets throughout the entire game today. And I really thought Kirk, with Kevin O'Connell giving him this confidence, him coming in here, I just think it's going to do wonders for him. But also, Kirk played pretty good today because of this guy, Justin Jefferson, the jersey I'm wearing right now. I was thinking about it before I got on here. I was like, should I throw on my Vikings polo or should I keep rocking the Jettas jersey? I had to, man. He was fantastic. I mean, if you think about top three receivers in the NFL, obviously it's probably Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, and Justin Jefferson. I would probably take Jefferson over both of them, and really you could go either way, but he really sh stood out today. Nine catches, 184 yards, and two touchdowns was pretty much being non-existent in the second half. He had 154 yards and two touchdowns with about five minutes left in the second quarter. He came out and dominated. I love the way they're using him. He would be in the backfield. He would be in the X. He would be in the slot. They were moving him all around the field, and he dominated today. And I also thought the main thing with Justin Jefferson, this year three breakout, I think it could actually be a thing. I, you know, I kind of laughed at when people said, oh, Jefferson could have a breakout year in year three because he was so dominant in years one and two. I kind of laughed at that. But he looks like he's on another level now. He looked like he added on a little muscle. Obviously not night and day muscle, but he looks thicker. He's finishing his runs. Love the way he played. He's, you know what, man? He has a chance to really win Offensive Player of the Year, and that would be awesome. Now this defense. Is it back? Is the defense back? I think it might be. I thought the defense actually looked great today. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers kind of going through his little struggle bus with getting to know these new receivers. But I really do think the Vikings defense, with what they did today, only allowing seven points, only allowing 273 yards total against a very good Packers offense. Yes, lost Devontae Adams. That's a huge loss. I'm not trying to discredit that loss. But to hold an Aaron Rodgers-led offense to 273 yards 
shout out to the Vikings defense. The Darius Smith, the Neil Hunter looked electric today. They were coming off the edge, flying around. I really thought they looked really good. And then the rush defense, that was my main concern coming into the today. Packers still were able to eclipse 100 yards, but I did really believe in this Vikings rush defense heading into next week in Philly. That's going to be a huge matchup. The, Philly, the Philadelphia Eagles love to run the football, and I think the Vikings showed me enough today. Against Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, I really think they proved enough to just give me some confidence going into next Monday. And then the four sacks, Dalvin Tomlinson had one. DJ Wanham had another. Zadarius Smith had one. And Daniil Hunter, I loved it. Now, before we get into the rest of my notes, go down, hit this link right here. YouTube.com slash Vikings today. I really think this team has a chance to be special. I'm going to be working every day to get you guys videos every single day, breaking down Vikings news, Vikings rumors, and giving you guys these raw post-game reactions where I'm literally just out there watching the game, and it's just, it's just fantastic. I mean, literally the Vikings just proved so much to me today, and I can't wait to keep making these videos for you guys. So let's see how many subs we can get off this video. Go down there, hit the big red button, Plug this link in there, youtube.com slash Vikings today. Kevin O'Connell, what a debut. It, the number one word, if I had a one-word reaction to Kevin O'Connell's debut, refreshed. You know, Mike Zimmer, the sour taste he left in my mouth from last season. Just a brutal feeling after last year. Kevin O'Connell came in, revamped the offense, and he brought in Ed Donatello and Mike, Mike Pettin to run this defense, and I'll get into Kevin O'Connell a little bit more, but I kind of want to know where you guys are with this D. You know, we do have a big game going into Philly next weekend. Pretty strong Vikings rush attack, or Eagles rush attack. What would your confidence level be in the Vikings defense after today? Go down, scale it 1 to 100. Let's pretend it's Madden. If you had to give the overall for the Vikings defense after today, I would probably still be sitting around an 81, 82 overall, but get down there and scale it 1 to 100. Now, Kevin O'Connell, like I said before, refreshed. I just felt with Mike Zimmer last season and just the negativity he had throughout that locker room last year, it was just a very refreshing feeling just in the stadium today and the way Kevin O'Connell held himself. Hey, Petey, he's a Bears fan. He just came in here and said FGB. I love it. F the Packers, man, and quoting Jimmy Garoppolo. But, yeah, I thought Kevin O'Connell, he did a great job of just keeping it fresh. And I thought the energy on the sidelines, I know you can't really look too much into that, but I felt last year the guys were playing not to make a mistake. This year they were playing to win the game. I loved it. Vikings, they look great today under Kevin O'Connell. Great debut. Shout out to you. Now my last note, Rodgers looked pissed. He looked extremely upset with his receivers. Countless times. I mean, remember the first big play of the game in the first half. Rodgers sends a beautiful 75-yard bomb to Christian Watson coming over his left shoulder, and he just flat-out drops it. Patrick Peterson got burned on that play. But Rodgers, he was getting frustrated, and it's going to happen. I mean, Christian Watson, Sammy Watkins, Randall Cobb, you go from that, or you go from Devontae Adams to that, it, there's going to be growing pain. So I really think Rodgers... I think this could be something that affects the Packers throughout the season because they're going to need to turn it on fast. I mean, if they still have these offensive struggles, and I'm not saying the Vikings defense is bad by any means, but I also don't think the Vikings defense is a bunch of world beaters. And the Packers offense really, really struggled. It's going to be interesting to see who Rodgers kind of picks as his number one receiver. I'm going to be kind of looking at that as the year goes around, but he really looked frustrated with these new wide receivers and building these new connections. So I want you guys to get into the comments after or on today's show and predict the Vikings re record after today's game. When I was doing my schedule prediction, I had the Vikings going 12-5, and five, and I had them beating the Green Bay Packers. I was thinking about upping it to 13-4. and four. I think I'm going to stick at 12-5 and five right now, play it safe. But, man, this team looked good, and I'm super excited to get out there or see them get out there week two against the Eagles. That's going to be a huge test-me game in Philly. It's going to be a Monday night game. I can't wait for that. So get down in the comments and predict the Vikings record. You can also follow me on Twitter right here, Pat Seatman NFL, tweeting about the Vikings all year long. Amazing game, amazing start to the season. I'll see you guys next time. Skull Vikes.